Hi, so I'm Julie and I'm a high school student from the DC area and I've been programming with Dr. Will Bird for a couple summers now. Um, and so he introduced me to Mini Canran and we started generating math problems and solving them with SMT solvers. And I'm also super interested in math competitions. So that was my introduction to Mini Canran. And then I learned about calculus and I thought it would be interesting to pair differentiation and then integration with Mini Canran because it's reversible. So I thought they would go nicely together and that is how DxO came to be. Um, and also, like, free, feel, feel free to ask questions during it. I'm not going to be looking at the chat. So Nada, can you interrupt with questions? Okay, great. Um, so let's get started. So first, just expressions that DxO can handle. It can handle polynomials, um, and the numbers have to be natural numbers. Um, but the polynomials don't have to be canonical or anything. And then some relations in DxO can handle more like variables in the exponent or multiple variables. Um, and three things to note, we have prefix notation. We do num and var tagging and all numbers are Oleg numbers. Um, so that's little Indian binary lists, which is just binary backwards, like this is two. And so DxO has four main capabilities. Like I said, differentiation and then backwards integration. Um, simplification and then complication, evaluation, and then the opposite of that is sort of interesting. It's expression creation and equation solving and some other things, and then reordering. So deeply reordering all addition and multiplication expressions inside of expressions. And so we have four main relations to do those things. The relations aren't um, connected in DxO, but the idea is that you would connect them for your own problem, and then I also wrote some things that connect them. Um, but they are do, so that takes an expression, um, its derivative with respect to a variable, and then simpo takes a not necessarily simplified expression, comp, and then its simplified form with certain simplification rules that we have, and then a valo takes an environment which maps variables to their oligonome rules, and then expression and its value. And then reorder O just takes two expressions. And so I'm going to show um, some of these relations, just simple demos of each of them. So first we have do, which takes a variable and then expression and derivative. So if our expression is x squared, the derivative should be 2x. Um, we can run it and we get that. I mean, this is 1 times x plus x times 1, which is just 2x. But that's also an example of where we could use simpo um, because we can just do a run to simplify that. So, just drag this in. And we get x plus x, which is 2x. And so our simple rules are sadly pretty simple. They're just these, and the one that just applied was e times 1 is e. Um, and that's something we'd like to expand. But right now, it just does case analysis for each of those in the complicated expression. And so we can also run do um, completely fresh. We can do this, which is just going to look for expert derivative pairs, and it's going to return 24 pairs where you have an expression and its derivative. So I don't know, pick one of them, pick the second to last one. Um, and that's just saying, like, over here I have it. That's saying that the derivative of anything um, that's like x to the something ending in 8 in binary, or like a multiple of 8 if it's non binary. Um, is x to the dot minus one times the original exponent. Okay, cool. And I'll really, really quickly show um, Simpo running backwards. 
So we're going to find 200 comp expressions that simplify to var x. Great. All of these do. And so these two relations, simpo and do, both run very well forwards um, and OK backwards. So forwards, I mean, the first expression is um, totally ground. So like with simpo, you're, the comp is totally ground. And with do, the expression is ground. Um, and then it can diverge if it's running backwards. So an example would be if I can create an impossible situation like this running forwards, um, where we have, we're trying to simplify one to one, one to the first power um, to be an addition expression, that's never gonna happen because that's always just gonna simplify to one, but it will still terminate. Great. Um, but if we reverse it and say something that simplifies to one to the one, which is also impossible, that will infinite loop. And then finally, the third one I'm going to show is a value, um, which is definitely the simplest of the four main relations. Um, but here's an example. We're evaluating with the empty environment for now, three plus two. So that should just be five. Yep. Um, and then we can also use the environment. So we can just replace this with var x. and it still evaluates to five. And so those are the three of the four main relations and I refer you to the paper um, to learn about reordero, which is also very cool. And so now let's do a problem. Um, we're gonna generate Pythagorean triples x, y, and z such that x squared plus y squared equals z squared. Um, and so this isn't a particularly difficult problem. This is, you know, you don't need DxO for this, but it is a good example. So you can even say it in the chat, which of the three things, which of the three um, relations I've used so far would you use? Maybe I'll pull up the clouder chat so I can see. Yeah, yeah, about low. exactly. So I have the code for that. Um, and so that's all around an avalo call, which is saying x squared here plus y squared is the value z squared. Um, and we have two different types of variables here. It's the mathematical variables, x and y, and then they're, binded, they're bound to fresh variables that we're gonna return in the run. Um, so x is bound to xv and so on. And then we have a multiplication at the bottom, making sure that z and z squared are all integers. So you can probably also guess in the chat if you want, you know, our typical triangle, what triangle is gonna come out of this? Pythagorean triple. Our favorite one, the zero zero triangle, the zero zero zero. It's just a dot. Thank you, Minnie Canran. That's very Minnie Canran esque, I think. And so I think it's kind of funny. But um, if we just add pause requirements to make sure the side links are positive, we will get our typical three, four, five. So this is three, four, five, right triangle. And so, yeah, this is just an example of how to use Avalo, um, what Avalo will look like. And then the idea is you would combine it with DO and SIMPO um, for more interesting combinations. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. I love it, Jason says. <laughs> and yeah, this Avalo is different than like the Avalo that 
from Jason's talk or anybody else's. <laughs> you can't. Could I ask for more answers? Yeah, should I? Maybe. It is actually, um, anyway. And so now we're gonna do a problem that combines all of them. So find two different polynomials, f of x and g of x, and two different natural numbers, a and b, such that the derivative of f evaluated at a is b, and the derivative of g evaluated at b is a. So we're flip-flopping. Um, this isn't like, I don't know, an intuitive thing that you could solve right here, but we can solve it. So f and g are not equal, b and a are not equal, and then we're using SIMPO a little bit differently than before. I'm just putting in these SIMPO FF calls um, for this run so that we can get simplified things come out of it because that will make sure that F is in simplified form. And then um, we have do, so we're gonna name the derivative of F, FD, and that can still be, like have variables that could have an X in it. And then finally we're evaluating FD. So, evaluate it at n of a, which has x bound to a, and vice versa. So great, I have this code over here. And it's reordered a little bit um, for just for speed and divergent behavior, uh, having the equals calls first. But um, let's run it and see. We get a bunch of solutions, so that's yay. And so I picked out a couple um, just to show. So for example, we can have f is x, the derivative of that is gonna be one, g is x to the 12th, the derivative of that would be 12x to the 11th, um, you know, plugging in one, we get 12. So great. Um, and then future work, we'd like to add automatic differentiation to replace DO. Um, we've already started a little bit, but we haven't done it relationally. Um, but both Ford's mode off automatic differentiation and reverse mode, try that. Um, and relatedly, we'd like to support more expressions. So e to the x, that kind of thing. Um, and also, thank you to Brandon Willard. We are now interested in implementing Knuth Bendix for Simpo. So, as you saw, our Simpo only had like plus zero times one, that kind of stuff. Um, but Knuth Bendix would allow us to have custom simplification rules, and implementing that relationally, I think, would be very cool. Um, and finally, a big one is optimizations and better divergence behavior. So, we have a couple. In some places, we check for same length but there are some things that really don't run very well um, right now. So for example, um, we have a relation described in the paper called any do, and that sort of generalizes do to more um, things that are actually mathematically derivatives. So sort of as you saw, do is always going to output a canonical expression, but if we take both the integral and derivative that go into do and simplify them, complicate them, and reorder them, combining all of those, um, you can like generalize do. And we found that that runs really, really slowly because you're using all of these um, together. So I'm not sure how to fix it, but I'm interested. And that is it. And this is my GitHub. <laughs>